In this chapter, we will learn to restrict access to a portion of our application so that only users who log in with a valid username and password can gain access. We call this process user authentication. User authentication is not necessarily a beginner topic, but there are a couple of reasons that I think it's worthwhile to include. First, password protected areas have become so common that you're almost guaranteed to need one in any web application that you build. And if you need it, it's important to add it correctly. Mistakes in this area can be particularly costly. It also helps to reiterate the point that site development choices and site security go hand in hand. You need to be mindful of security in every part of your code. And last, it will give us a chance to look at a few more features of Rails. Here are some of the additional Rails concepts that we'll see throughout this chapter. Encryption techniques, non-database attributes, cookies and sessions, controller method accessibility, and before actions. Let's start by getting an overview of how the login process works. And to do that, I want to begin with an analogy that I think will help you to understand it. Imagine that you're going to be purchasing tickets to a concert or an event. You go and you pick up the tickets. You wait in line. They let you in. They even stamp your hand, making it clear that you've been allowed into the concert. Now, you can go in and out of the event as you like. You can move around the different rooms. And all the time, they'll know that you've given your ticket and that you're allowed to be there because you have this hand stamp that says so. It works the same way with our pages. The admin is going to create a user in the database. That's like purchasing the tickets for a concert. At that point, we have the ability to attend even though we haven't attended yet. Then, when the user comes to the site and they log in via a login form, that's like waiting in line to pick up your tickets. When the application authenticates the user, that is, takes the username and password and sees are they valid, that's like presenting your identification, getting your tickets, and then getting a hand stamp so that you can then enter the concert. And you can then go wherever you want inside the event. When the user requests additional password protected pages, well, that's like showing your hand stamp. You can avoid the line, you can simply just re-enter because we know that you have that stamp. You know that you're allowed to be there. And then last of all, when a user logs out, that's like washing away the hand stamp. It essentially says at that point, you're no longer allowed to be in the event. You would need a new ticket if you wanted to get back in. I think that analogy can be helpful to hold this concept of user authentication in your head. Let's take a look at the step-by-step -step that we're going to be doing in our application to make that happen. The admin is going to create a user in the database. The password is going to be encrypted before the user is stored. The user is going to log in via a login form. And then the application is going to authenticate the user. We're going to search for the username in the database, and if the username is found, we're going to compare it with the encrypted password that we have stored. If the password matches, then we're going to set a variable in the session to their user ID and redirect them to some post-login page. The user will then request additional password-protected pages, and the cookies and session data are going to be available on each request, so we'll have access to that user ID. The application can check it, and if that user ID is present, then it will be able to return the requested page but if it's not present, then we'll redirect them to the login form because they don't have their hand stamp. And then, last of all, the user logs out, in which case we set that user ID, which has been stored, back to null. So essentially taking away their hand stamp. That gives you an overview of what user authentication is. In the next movie, let's see how we do it in Rails.